All right. Joining us now on the Off the Carousel series is a uh, new Green Bay head coach, Sundance Wicks, who comes over from uh, the University of Wyoming, where he was an assistant, one of the uh, highest energy assistant coaches, if nothing else, <laughs> in college basketball. And coach, appreciate you joining us and congrats on the new gig. No, I appreciate it, Kevin, man. It's good to be here. Um, it, it, the energy, right? The highest energy, right? Yeah, it's funny. That's good. Uh, so I guess I'd, I'd start, you know, you're you're inheriting a program, and I hate to start on negative, but you went three and twenty nine last year, three three hundred sixty one in Ken Palm. Like, what gives you the confidence when you see this job opens that hey, I, I want this thing, I want this challenge? No, that that's a great. I mean, let's just build on that though. I mean, three and twenty nine, sixteen and seventy one in the last three years. So you're sitting there going, man, what the heck's going on here? Like, who who runs into that fire? Um, but that's exactly the type of person I am. I think in the last three years, if you if you go back and look at what we did at Missouri Western when I was a Division II head coach, uh, it was probably the worst two-year stretch that they'd had in program history and turned that around. Then we went to Wyoming, where it was the worst two-year stretch in probably Wyoming's basketball history. We turned that around in two years and went to the display tournament. And you're coming back into it. So uh, it's, it's, it's field experience right now, right? I mean, this is kind of – I'm built for this type of stuff. you got to have requisite energy level and, and intentionality every single day to go into a situation where – uh, everybody else wants to go plug and play and maybe just sit in the office and be a coach and just drop schemes and strategy and see if they can go beat the next guy uh, where this is a full-time job in every single avenue from fundraising to recruiting to culture to connection to community. Um, it's just those are the type of things that I love. And so I'm running into that. And I always say, man, if there's something going, if there's a burning building, I'm going to run into that fire. We're going to go save the women and children. We're going to come back out on the other side. Um. Uh, you mentioned Missouri Western. You were a Division II coach and and had some success at that level. There's been a lot of guys recently who've had a lot of success moving up from that. I know, obviously, you were an assistant in Wyoming for a couple of years in between, but Tobin Anderson obviously got a lot of attention for what he did at Fairleigh Dickinson last year. Um, Bart Lundy in, in your league, in the Horizon League, was very successful in year one. Uh, I'm I'm just curious what you learned from from that experience as being a head coach at a, at a lower level that you think will, will help translate to the division one level? That's a phenomenal question. I mean, and it's, it's, it's the reason why I hired the staff. I hired as well. Every single coach on my staff has had experience at the, at the division two level or the junior college level. Uh, they've worked jobs that require you to be intentional in all aspects of it. Uh, Cause when you're coming into jobs in these situations, uh, you find out where all the bodies are buried and you realize, man, you gotta, you gotta have some big shovels, man. Cause you're going to have to be, you're going to be digging a lot of stuff up and figure a lot, solving a lot of problems on the fly. Uh, and so that's for me working at division two and kind of ha- cutting my teeth there as a GA. And then I worked for coach Meyer, who obviously uh, is a legend in basketball circles as a coach's coach. He, he's a guy that taught you every single aspect of building a program of growing a culture. And for me, it's just that, that experience pays dividends because now you could come into a situation and not just, you, you understand how the budget works. You understand how to schedule your own buses, right? You, you know how to you know how to beat the budget. I always like to say we're a champagne program on a beer budget around here, right? And Wisconsin <laughs> loves their beer, so I mean, what the heck? Let's just enjoy it. Uh, so we like to live like we're like we're, we're we got the high life up here, but we know that we're basically a, we're a beer program right now, and uh, that's that's what the Division two levels, that's what the lower level uh, lower levels teach you. That's what junior college teaches you. And just cut your teeth in all aspects of it. How much did that help you with the first, you know, month or two of, of this transition, having been a head coach before? Uh, tons. I mean, and there's no experience like your first time, right? So your first 60 days, uh, when I was at Missouri Western working for Josh Looney, who's now the director of athletics at North Alabama, you know, he was a, he was a high level, high level leader, uh, much like Josh Moon is here. He's a high level leader. He just kind of lead you in a way where you got to go. And then they, they want you to figure it out. And that's what you're built for. And so when the first time you get a head coaching job, you, your head spinning, you're dancing in a tornado, you feel like everything's sinking. You got, you feel like everything just slipping out of the grasp of your hands. And next thing you know, you got a roster, right? And uh, coming into this situation, you know, there's a little bit more poise, there's a little bit more purpose, a little more direction uh, this time. And especially when you're, you know, division two, you have a GA and an assistant. And so now you got to, you got to coach your coaches. You got to have guys who are, uh, highly accountable human beings that can get the job done without you having to tell them you know, what to do every single day. I think it's a mark of great assistance is they just know what the coach needs before he needs it. Uh, and so things are sitting on your desk when you come in and you're not having to ask them, where's this or where's that? Uh, so the second time around, it's it's a lot, lot smoother. Uh, I think you keep the main thing, the main thing. 
because you can be pulled in a lot of different directions. And, you know, if you don't focus on your family as much, if you don't focus on your faith, you know, if you don't focus on the things that are important, like building a roster, you kind of get lost in the lost in the sauce, as they say. Um, you mentioned coach Don Meyer and and your experience getting to, to play for him and then get your start in coaching under him. You know, a guy that's legendary in this profession, but because of the levels he worked at, maybe the average fan doesn't necessarily know his name or know the significance of what he was as a coach. Can can you speak to what he was like and what you learned from him on, on your journey to becoming a head coach? I, I think, you know, we can get lost in all the transfer portal stuff and recruiting and all those things. At the end of the day, we're still teachers, right? I think that's part of what I love most about this game is teaching and growing a team, building a team, uh, creating culture. Uh, having things you know that last you know beyond your time at any spot that you're at uh, and coach was a you know i always say coach was a coach's coach he had he had dick bennett come out to you know dick bennett's a green bay legend he had dick bennett coach uh spoke in his coaching academy we had bill self come to aberdeen uh, south dakota pat summit john wooden i mean bill i mean it's, it's crazy the list of guys that had, had come to S aberdeen south dakota just to do a coach's clinic for don meyer because a lot of those coaches grew up watching some of his VHSs that he made when he was at David Lipscomb, you know, and um, the overall operational side of a basketball program at its like core, you know, at its core, it's, it's, he could build a program from teaching and instruction to operationally, you know, to fundraising, to friend raising, to winning championships, uh, all the minutia that goes into it. He, he lived that every single day. I never see a guy work harder in my life. Uh, and so anybody that knows the name Don Meyer, I'm pretty much going to tell you, they know how to coach basketball. And and that's where you learn to teach. You learn to teach from other guys. You, you, you steal things from every single coach that were around. Well, was he a big part of your inspiration for wanting to coach or did that come beforehand? Yeah, I was playing professional over in Sweden, professional basketball in Sweden. And they just won their first conference tournament championship with Steve Smiley, who's now the head coach in Northern Colorado. He's my teammate and he redshirted. I didn't. So I left a year before him and, I called him at 3 a.m. Swedish time, and I said, Steve, congrats, man. They don't win the championship. Coach grabs the phone. He goes, Sonny, what the hell are you doing over in Sweden? You're never going to make much money over there. You're not making any money now. Crap. And you're not going to be a very good pro. So why don't you just come back, be a GA, and start coaching? Because you'll be a lot better damn coach than you will a basketball player. And he just hung the phone up. And I sat there, and I said, my freaking coach, like, I'm done playing. I'm, I guess I'm done being a pro now. I guess I'm done. Like, I got to go back. But when coach says stuff like that, you know, a guy that you respected and he kind of, you know, becomes a second father to you. you. You heed those omens. And he told me I was going to be a great coach. He told me I had had a lot in the tank and, you know, you don't, you don't know crap when you're 24 years old. So you just listen to people that know a lot more than you do. And I still don't know crap. And here I am about to be 43 and um, just figuring it all out still. I guess that's the, that's the beauty of Don Myers. He makes you a lifelong learner. Um, if, if anyone, watching this has uh followed coach on twitter they know that he tweets a lot about uh bringing your own juice i'm curious what that slogan means to you uh and how that how you embody that as a head coach yeah you know bring your own juice basically just means bring bring your own spirit every single day i think we're all unique human beings right and um be yourself you know the by and bring your own juice but be yourself uh, that's the best advice i ever got into coaching and in, in just anything you go into when every time you go in a job interviewing process, you kind of call your mentors and you're like, well, what about this and this? And they just always, the great ones always just give you simple advice. And they sit there and they go, Hey, Hey, relax. Just go be yourself, man. Everybody else has already taken. And so when I tell our guys to bring their own juice, you know, I'm a little bit more outgoing, a little bit more energetic. My wife, she's steely eyed. She's quiet confidence. You know, she'll stare right. She'll stare right through your soul. And that's juice too. Right. And so there's introverts, there's extroverts, but I don't want you to be somebody that you're not. And I'm not going to try to be somebody that I'm not. I'm going to bring my own juice every single day. Uh, and I just want you to be yourself. And I tell our guys all the time, man, this is a journey of self. This basketball thing that we're embarking on, this vehicle that we use to get a degree and go into the real world, this is a journey of self. And ultimately, you got to know who you are. And more importantly, you got to know who you are not. And so bring your own juice, man, it means just you're comfortable being who you are. And you learn to live in that own, your own, you learn to live with your own spirit and your own soul, man. So many times we're just not comfortable being who we want to be somebody else. It's a comparathon out there. We just got to stop running that race for somebody else and run the race for yourself. 
All right, I'm curious. I, I, I saw you guys play in Laramie two years ago, and I saw you in Chicago, and, and your kind of pregame energy that you bring in warm-ups and whatnot is, is next level, and I'm not sure I've seen anything like it. As a head coach, do you plan on continuing that, or are you going to, like, hide in the locker room like most guys do? Like, what's the, what's I the hate plan? hiding in the locker I'm going to be honest with you. It's like, I just – I can't sit still. You know how it is. I got – I, I believe that God gave me a gratuitous amounts of energy. And if I don't use it, he's going to take it away. I'm not saying I'm going to be out there, you know, getting after it like I did when I was an assistant, but I like to go out and I like to touch and connect with guys. You know, I like to make sure that they feel that presence out there. So many times guys can get lost in their own thoughts uh, in the warmups and kind of almost work themselves up into too much of a frenzy. And I, I want to add a little lightness to it, a little levity to it, because it is a, it is tough to go out there and compete. And I want guys to have their own routines, but, I mean, I'm going to be the same way all the time. And I want to be, I want those guys to know that I'm out there and I'm in the trenches with them. I'm not some figurehead sitting back in a locker room. So I'll go out and enjoy a little bit, but I still, do, I still got to go back there and make sure that what we're, what we're doing on the floor, we got it. We got to execute it. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, on a more serious note, how, how difficult was it for you to leave Wyoming? I know that that's home for you, right? A big part of probably leaving a head coaching opportunity was the fact you could get, get back yeah. to the state of Wyoming and, and work for a guy like Jeff Linder. Like what, what, how difficult was that decision? It was hard. I mean, Jeff's a phenomenal coach, man. He's a phenomenal human being. I, I, it was a basketball sabbatical unlike any other. Uh, when I left Missouri Western, I wanted to go study under what I consider the greatest basketball mind, offensive basketball mind and college basketball. Um, he's supremely advanced in just his European concepts and trends and spacing, respacing, manipulating space. So it was it was a it was a phenomenal journey for me to go work for Coach Linder and, and then to go back to my home state, but these these opportunities don't come around very often. There's 363, maybe 362. Hartford dropped out, you know, like of these opportunities uh, in the world. So it's very rare to be a Division One head basketball coach. And it wasn't one of those things that I created a bucket list of stuff. It's like I'm gonna by the age of this, I'm gonna go be a Division One head basketball coach. It, I just kind of I'm on I'm on the journey. Right. And then an opportunity presents itself and the path is the path. And sometimes you're you're going straight and sometimes you veer off. And when this opportunity presented itself, I, I went after it. I wanted to win it. Uh, and now here I'm sitting in this chair. And it's just like any other chair, in my opinion. They're all kind of awkward and they hurt your back sometimes. So uh, for me, it's 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 basketball. We're not curing cancer. But I try to tell people all the time this. It's maybe we're not curing cancer, but maybe we're we're coaching somebody who finds a cure for cancer. And so we're, the mission is always going to be the man uh, more than anything else. The mission is always going to be the men that we're coaching and can we grow them and develop them and, and put them in a space that allows them to be, you know, self-sufficient, productive citizens of society down the road. One guy you got to coach at, at Wyoming and are, are bringing along for the ride at Green Bay is, is Noah Reynolds, who's you know really dynamic guard was, was really productive, you know, this past season, in the mountain West, what is it, you know, how valuable is it for you to be able to bring a guy like that and help, you know, establish your culture and, and set the foundation with, with a guy who's as talented as Noah Reynolds is? I think it's important to have guys in your locker room to understand who you are, right? And so Noah's one of them. Uh, and obviously we know how talented Noah is and, and, and what a competitor he is. Uh, Will Eames is another one. So, you know, full circle moment for me being a head coach is uh, I recruited Will Eames, who was my first recruit to Missouri Western. He was an under-recruited kid from Lee Summit, Missouri, a six foot seven Larry Bird look alike, you know. So, so body looks like puke, you know, and you don't kind of unassuming when you walk watch him walk into a gym. But he was freshman of the year in the MIAA, which is a damn good conference, right? Best division two conference in the country, in my opinion. And uh, now he graduated and he's going to be a grad transfer for us. So I'm going to be able to coach Will at you know at the beginning of his career and at the end of his career. And uh Will is a lot like Noah. It's just we pride ourselves in out evaluating programs and out evaluating schools. Noah had zero division one offers out of high school. So do Williams. He had walk on opportunities, but he had zero division one offers. And both those guys are going to end up being really impactful for us. Noah obviously proved it. Uh, Will proved it. He's four time all league player and in, in one of the best conferences in the country in division two. And, and Noah's got a chance now to come out here and, and be the lead guard and, and kind of be a guy who's, who's going to be heavily relied upon for, for the rest of his career. I think when you got on this Zoom, you said it was like 55 days in or 56, something yep. like that. What yep. uh, what have you learned across those two months? And, and where do you think you are compared to where you hoped you'd be at this point when you took this job? 
I, was, I mean, it's crazy because I always tell you, coaches, if you're going to go into an interview, you know, people think it's cliche, but they're going to ask you for a 30, 60, 90, you know, 365 plan. They want to see, you know, where you're supposed to be at. And obviously the, the biggest thing is, is getting a roster, right? And I, to me, like when you, when I sit back here in the next two days and it hits day 60, you know, I want to have a roster completed where I know we got 13 guys uh, that are all, that all believe in what we're doing. And the remarkable side of this is I didn't, we didn't shy away from three and 29 or 16 and 71. We told them up front, this is what it is. And it's like stocks, man. You want to buy low and sell high. Uh, here's where we are. Uh, the room for growth, you talked about Tobin, but like the room for growth, like how you can, you know, stretch that gap. Green Bay is a phenomenal job because they've, they've always won here in their past. They have a storied history. It's not like it's a job that nobody's ever went to the NCAA tournament or they've never won. Wardle, Kowalczyk, Bennett, Heideman, Buss, like Link Darner, you know, 2016 takes them to the NCAA tournament. All those guys have won. And so for me, it was understanding like, this is a, this is a sleeping giant right now. We're not dead. We're dormant. We just got to wake them up a little bit and inject a little bit of juice in them. Uh, and so in our first 60 days, we were able to flip a roster and, you know, they tell you when you're buying a house, man, it's a lot easier to just gut it, you know, than it is to like try to refurbish something and sand it down and then repaint it. And so we, we kind of just gutted the roster for lack of better words. And uh, there was a lot of things that, we had to make sure we hit on roster one community engagement. Number two, making sure that we're connecting back to the community alumni and fan base following. Uh, and then, and then just culturally inside the department here, making sure that uh, our staff does a good job connecting with everybody on campus and making sure we understand the right relationships that we need to have and how we treat people uh, and go about our business. It's just, it's, it seems like it was all a blur, but I mean, you're two months in already. And, and those, and you don't, you don't get time to sleep. So I'm almost fortunate that my family, my wife's still working. She doesn't get done teaching until June 2nd. I'm almost fortunate. My family wasn't here because uh, for those 60 days, they wouldn't have seen me anyways. And that's just what you have to sacrifice sometimes at the beginning of this to make sure that it works out in the long run. So in the micro it's a sprint, but in the macro, we all know it's a long race and, and not everybody sticks around to see it through. So you got to make sure you you know that this is a marathon and not just a 60 day sprint. All right. And last one for you. I see you're, you're in the process of decorating the office. We've got this, what this like led peace sign here in the backdrop. What's the, uh, right. what's the story there? Peace of love, man. Like this is good positive vibes only around here, man. It's PVO. You know, it's, uh, I'm a big positive vibes guy. I'm a relentless optimist. That's probably why, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here in the chair where you can sit there and talk about having green Bay, having success. And when they, when they've been what they've been the last three years, but that's part of me is every player that came here before me, every coach that came here before me is there's a level of pride that they have. And I think you have to honor the past, right? If you, you know, our, our athletic director says honor the past and ignite the future. That's kind of what we're looking for to do for, with green Bay basketball. Um, but you have to, you have to respect those that came before you. You have to respect the great coaches in the history of green Bay. Um, you have to respect the great players. And Jeff Norgard has been, you know, phenomenal for me. We went down to saw Ryan Boris's driveway. He has a shooting gym. He's one of the greatest shooters in Green Bay basketball history. You know, you got Kiefer Sykes from Mom Fletcher. You got Cordero Barkley, who averaged three points and three rebounds, but he's in town working at Title Town Tech, looking like he averaged 20 and 10. You know, it's there's just so many, there's so many people that are still around, so many players that are still around. And I want, I want those positive vibes to come in to our program. I want the love to spread as too many times we sit in these chairs, we take ourselves so dang seriously. And we're, I guess it's, just, it's not, it's not one of those things where you got to have a scowl on your face the entire time. You can have fun doing this. Even when it's hard, you can have fun doing this because it's a pretty dang good, pretty fortunate to be here and pretty good, dang good job to have. Well, uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you uh, accomplish this year and beyond uh, Green Bay, uh, Sundance Winch. Appreciate you uh, joining us on Off the Carousel. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more 
true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional basis for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.